was never happy as a child. Christmas, Ted, what does that mean to you? It means a living hell. Ah, oh, well, that's better. <clears throat> Welcome to Fuzzy Wig and Mom's annual Christmas party. <laughs> I know you hate Christmas, but what if it's all just a misunderstanding? I don't care. I mean, Boy, the holidays are rough. Every year I just try to get from the day before Thanksgiving to the day after New Year. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Too Much CGI, the show where we talk about pop culture geekery, both retro and today. If you were a kid in the 80s, you are in our club. My name is Bill, here as always with Scott. How are you doing, sir? I am doing well, all things considered. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. It got past uh, Thanksgiving, so only a couple more holidays I got to deal with. Christmas and New Year's. That's it. <laughs> and then I'm free. You're going to love today's show, my friend. Oh, no. What's today about? Christmas songs, our favorite and our least favorite. I don't have a favorite, so I'll give you all least favorites. I had a hard time coming up with least favorites. I came up with a handful, but I was like, ooh, I need two pages to fill out my favorites here. And we're going to bring our friend Sister Michelle on. Yeah. We'll get the woman's insight about her favorite Yuletide carols. The problem with me is my favorite Christmas songs are all parodies of Christmas songs, like Dr. Dirty's. You know, silent <laughs> fart song. Like, I like that kind of stuff. So now, anytime I hear one of these Christmas carols, silent night, I hear the Dr. Dirty version. Yeah. Like John yeah. Valby. We talked about John Valby before and that debauchery. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, listen. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're enjoying the show. We are seeing numbers rise, and that's killer. But don't forget, there is a price to listen. You must tell one single friend. We're a show that works only if you can get the word out about us. And that is your fee. That is your fee to listen. And if you don't do it, we know. Scott and I will come and tickle you. We will tickle. We will come and tickle. Tickle, tickle. I'll also say all you new people that are here, because I know there's new people. Numbers are showing that. Somebody told you it's your job to pay it forward. Now you have to tell somebody else. And they'll tell two people. And they'll tell two people. And so on. And so on. We are masterful marketers. Like, we know exactly how to grow a podcast. Beg you to tell somebody. So pretty please, with sugar on top. It really is hard. There are like 9 billion podcasts. Every time I tell somebody, hey, we got a podcast, like, me too. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint. That's the way I'm viewing this. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. Oh, I got a lot on my mind today. I don't even know where to dig in. I've got some thoughts about some things that have happened in the last week we've got some mailbag Ooh, let's hear from the people you want to hear from the people you want to start right with mailbag i think i do yeah let's do it Mail, motherfucker. oh we got something from bill blades that's the coolest name bill blades that's like chuck smooth you know like that's like <laughs> the coolest name bill blades max power that's that's fucking good so bill blades writes hey guys sorry it's been a while this year had been a bit crazy so i've been playing starfield by Bethesda. I have also been around for long enough to remember when Bungie came out with Marathon in the late 90s, which was only available on Max. My buddies and I used to daisy chain our Max together to play PvP. Player versus player, <laughs> for those who don't know. Anyway, Halo and Destiny were the best of that company. Now that Starfield has been around since September and it looks like Bungie is faltering, which is sad, by the way, what are your thoughts? I love that he wrote this because you and I were massive Halo fans. Yeah. We had so much fun. I think for years playing Halo. Halo 2 and Halo 3, when they went to the, the I want to say MMO because it wasn't massive multiplayer, but the death matches and just like the, the lobbies you can join and just, yeah, just dragging people left and right. We played way too much. But it was the first game that was ever that big and played that well like you could shoot a rocket from the other side of the map and it could land on the other person like it was a big world and it was the first game that could do that as far as virtual yeah it was the first the first game that could do that but back in college we played a lot of 007 goldeneye on the n64 problem is it was always local you had to have four controllers plugged in and you were only playing right there but as far as you know, virtually playing with your friends there was nothing else like it around yeah, I know I lost steam with Halo about the time you stopped playing it. I was like, well, if he ain't going to play it, I'm not going to play it. But it was like, it was, I remember there were so many different versions of Halo, and it was just, I punched out. Then they put out that other game that Bill mentioned, Destiny. So when Destiny came out, it was supposed to be like the next big thing from the people who made Halo. Yeah. And I never got it. I missed the boat on it. Me too. Me too. Now, Starfield, do you know about this game? I don't know Starfield, but I certainly know Bethesda. Bethesda is huge with online, uh, massive multiplayer role-playing games. But 
yeah, I did. I don't know Starfield. Yeah, it, I read about it a little bit. It's another big game, and it's in space, and it's you know, you it's another like you can do anything. Kind of like how Red Dead Redemption was like. You're a cowboy. We have so much that you can do here. Yeah, I played that. I never got into Mass Effect. That was a big one that people went nuts for. And Warcraft. I never played Warcraft either. Like, that was another big role-playing game that I just never got into that world. Most things that make me have to walk around and find stuff and then backtrack. Like, I did that in college. That was fucking <laughs> Tomb Raider. I'm done <laughs> doing that kind of shit. <laughs> like, the way that you played the Batman games and the Lego games, you're like, I haven't found every single Lego in this game. Like, oh my god. <laughs> I was very, very much a completionist when it came to the Lego games and Batman's Arkham Asylum. I got like every achievement on the Xbox. Yeah, I went pretty nuts with those. Well, Bethesda's Fallout 4, that was the game that even though there was script and there was story and chatter, I was way into that because that was an amazing game. Is that the one in Las Vegas? The fourth one wasn't in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. But it was just more like, you know, improving upon the technology. You're walking around this uh, post-apocalyptic world. You can pick up guns. You can modify things. It's a lot of work. Like, you really, <laughs> when I got the game, my buddy said, well, great. Have fun. Kiss your free life goodbye. He wasn't wrong. <laughs> you really get sucked into some of these games. They're massive. And I'm pretty sure this new one, this new space version, Starfield, is supposed to be, you know, uh, Fallout 4 in space, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Damn. Well, that's, I see why it was a busy year there, Billy Blades. That's uh, quite the time sink you got yourself. Yeah, and he's saying that Bungie is faltering, I guess. If this game didn't take off, I mean, nobody's looking for Halo anymore. Isn't Bungie a Microsoft company? That's like their game developer, right? That's what I thought. Or at least they had a partnership. Yeah, they could have split, though. I don't know. Speaking of Microsoft, did you hear what's going on with OpenAI? No. You're my AI source, so you tell me. <laughs> Let me make this very quick. There's still a lot of rumors out there. We're not totally sure what's going on. But all of a sudden, the CEO of OpenAI, who makes ChatGPT, was fired. The board threw him out. Microsoft, who has a massive deal with ChatGPT, was a major investor and is using ChatGPT in Bing and other Microsoft products, was completely blindsided. Almost like, you can't do that. Like, <laughs> that's going to screw us. To where I go, hey, Microsoft, why weren't you on the board? Like, you could have had some control here. Sure. So they kicked the guy out, and then they started to go, Microsoft goes, well, what do we do? Why do we hire the guy uh, that they kicked, off, kicked out? His name was Sam Altwell. And then everything started to blow up over at ChatGPT. How could you kick out Sam? So then they fired other people from the board, brought Sam back in. Well, what caused all this? The rumor is they have made a giant breakthrough, and half of the board didn't want it being released the other half was like, I can't wait to make money on this. Let's call Microsoft right away and sell this. All right. This thing is nicknamed Q star. And apparently it is figured out the most complex math formulas that human beings can't figure out without AI help. It is so good that the rumor is it can crack 128 bit encryption. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds to me like the board can be replaced by AI. We don't need them anymore. Oh, man. <laughs> Think about that. Like, this thing can basically hack everything from the White House to nuclear secrets to our email. But the other side of it is, think about what it can also do. It can correlate so much more data now. Yeah. So all the data in the world that we, you know, remember when COVID was going on, everyone was like, well, how many deaths were there? Nobody knows. Well, this is the kind of technology that can that now take all of that information, compile it, and give us answers that we didn't have before that actually might be able to help, you know, society improve, do a little better. So <laughs> I'm looking at this AI situation going, this could be the thing that destroys us and the thing that saves us. Which way are we going to go? I hope that they're applying Isaac Asimov's rules of robotics when they're planning all these things out, you know, harm no human. There are boards and things like that, like groups, yeah, that are trying to, like, make sure they're policing AI. Good. Mm. Good. You trust them, huh? Who's watching the watchers? That's my question. Oh, man, it's <laughs> chaos out there. It's chaos out there. I did just read a story that like uh, they there was this tablet of an unknown language and AI was used to crack the code of what this language was. I can't recall where it was found or what the language was, but AI was used to decipher what the meaning of it was and put their word context into modern day language so it can be read. 
to me, it's still one of the greatest tools that I've ever had at my disposal. I'm able to do a lot with it. I'm able to make money off AI, but it's one of those things that I still see it taking a lot of jobs. They took our job. They took our job. So if you're listening to me right now and you're worried about your job being taken by AI, go learn AI. That means they'll <laughs> hire you for the AI positions and they won't hire the others who haven't learned the AI. Yeah. Don't fight it. Get it hit the ground floor. And let me announce this because AI has really made things a lot easier. We're going to start a little video series, a little video series. Scott has seen the first little one. I learned something. Don't tell anybody yet. Cause okay. Okay. I don't want to already spoil our first video, but I figured out using AI, like there's ways that I can really streamline making these, you know, little five minute informational videos, all sorts of stuff. You didn't know we're calling it useless pop knowledge. And it's all kinds of stuff that you may not know about. And that's what our show is about bringing you things you didn't know. So AI is going to make these videos instead of take like four or five hours each. It took me 30 minutes to make the one I made and showed you today. So definitely going to be doing this. I'll tell you this, not to give any spoilers, but maybe to tickle your ass with a feather. I knew this person was a nut job and definitely an oddball. Didn't know he was that big of a pain in the ass that he didn't come back for the sequel. Oh, that'll be the first one. If you want to know about the first one that goes out, follow us on Twitter. Too Much CGI on Twitter. You can also go to TooMuchCGI.com. You can send us an email there. You can follow us on Facebook as well. How do you find us on Facebook? I have no idea. Just go to the search bar and try Too Much CGI. Maybe you'll get lucky. Facebook is a giant mess. Well, I hear you have some mail, huh? I do. I heard from Brother Chris. He wants us to know, holy shit, RC Pro-Am. Forgot all about it. Can't believe you remembered it. Loved reminiscing about the game and hearing about all my other favorite games during that segment we did two episodes ago, I think. Um, however, he had a, a bone to pick. Why no Zelda? Oh, my God. How did we forget Zelda? Well... <laughs> I didn't forget Zelda. I never owned Zelda. So part of the stipulation was it had to be part of our collection. So I couldn't include Zelda because I never owned it. I had the first one. I loved it. And I probably couldn't have done anything with it if it didn't have a map from Nintendo Power. <laughs> oh, right? yeah. Because there was no internet. That was one of those. So that was a good victory when I beat that game. Then they made part two. Remember, they called it Link yep. Zelda 2 or something like that. Link to the past. And then they had uh, something like that. And then they put. Not only did they have the aerial view, but they tried side scrolling. It was terrible. See, I like that game. <laughs> I actually enjoyed that one more than the first one somehow. But that was it for me. Then I was like done with Zelda. I was like, you know, I'm not really that into this. So it didn't even stay in my head as a, a big game, but it's clearly a big game. We just talked about it a couple uh, episodes ago. They're making a TV show about it because it's that big a game. And we forgot it. Amazing. No, well, they're making a, a live action movie about it more than a TV show. They're going all in. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And I will say Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time on the N64, maybe one of my favorite video games of all time. Has nothing to do with 8-bit video games, has nothing to do with this or arcades, but that's probably my all favorite, my all-time favorite video game. I remember it too, because they were all talking about it. Everybody was talking about that. Zelda game, and we brought it up the other day, uh, the Starfighter game or the, the X-Wing game. Yes. And I remember it was like, all right, I'm going to get the X-Wing game. I'm too old for Zelda. I'm an adult now. I'm not going to be playing Zelda. So you played Rogue Squadron instead. Rogue Squadron was kind of a stinker. Well, a lot of adults keep playing Zelda. So <laughs> did he say anything about the boat game that I couldn't remember? No. Did he remember that one? Nothing about RC Pro-Am 2 or RC Pro-Am Boat. Nobody knows anything about it. Damn it. Because I went looking for it. No go. This might just be, yeah, this might just be a fever dream. This game may have never existed and I completely made it up. Should have published it. Maybe it would have been good. Missed my chance. <laughs> well, uh, what else is going on, man? I know you said besides Mailbag, we have uh, some other what the fucks that happened this week. What do you got? I got three things. One, I'm going to save for the news. That would be the Daryl Hall and John Oates divorce. <laughs> oh, I love it. Stay tuned for that. That is the greatest thing ever. I am so happy about it because it's so unbelievable that Daryl Hall and John Oates are still somehow relevant enough to be getting these kind of headlines. Makes me happy. I just love there's a restraining order. <laughs> and it's not as juicy as what it sounds, but it sounds like, you're like oh, restraining order. Oh, shit. Yeah. Somebody got smacked. I know. I, but it didn't happen. I know. That's right. 
Oh, fuck it. We'll just do the story now. Yeah, it turns out like one had wanted to give away or, or sell the publishing rights and the other was like, no, 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 I have rights there too. You can't. So I'm not totally sure I understand in this article that I was going to read the news, but now I'm reading now. How does a restraining order cure things here? I don't think it's a restraining order, like a personal restraining order. I think it's a court injunction that says that you can't move forward with selling your shares of this unless I have the sign off. The thing is, they already sold off some of the rights to their music. I don't know the percentages or anything. So they each still own, maybe collaboratively own a percentage. And John Oates wants to sell that off. And Daryl Hall's like, no, I ain't, I ain't selling away my rights to my music. Nope. So he filed a court injunction to stop John Oates from doing this. They're calling that the restraining. Yeah. So it says court records show Hall filed a complaint and request for a temporary restraining order against Oates on November 16th. The court granted a restraining order against Oates beginning November 30th, but no further details are available as the case is sealed. This comes after Hall made critical comments about Oates in an interview last year, essentially dismissing him as just a business partner rather than an artistic collaborator. The two have released 18 albums together since 1972 and recently toured in October 2022, though both have pursued solo work. Jenna fucking hates Hall and Oates. Really? The whole yacht rock scene. I, I, I think it's very infectious. I can get down with some. I can't go for that. I can go yeah. for that. Man eater. Man eater. Yeah. But other things, other things, uh, that Marvel's movie came and went, huh? That came out. That Marvel's movie. Yeah. Um, bombed already. And Disney's already like, not my fault. It's these people's <laughs> fault. <laughs> it's these people working in Disney yeah. who just did a terrible job. Well, those are the people that you hired, right? Those are the people that you hired because, and, and they hired, I mean, they're getting called out for being woke and we, we talked about this to death and now it's starting to come out that, yeah, maybe they were really making decisions behind the scenes based on politics, not necessarily on good story writing, storytelling. They brought people in based on their, you know, sex and their color, not necessarily based on their history of writing and directing. No shit. And to me, yeah, right. To me, you can see what happened. Like you just don't have good people in, you get bad product. So I get what they were trying to do, but I think it just backfired. And this movie is the ultimate backfire. To me, this movie has no reason to exist. It's got a character that nobody remembers from WandaVision. It's got the Captain Marvel, which nobody really loved. Nobody cared about that much. It's a continuation off Secret Invasion, which nobody liked and watched. And Miss Marvel, like people weren't even that into Miss Marvel. How in the world they thought that this should be made is beyond me. Other than, hey, let's make a movie because woke is really hot right now. And that's what a lot of people did. But that's Hollywood. They saw an opportunity. They thought people would want to see this. And I'm all for representation. I don't mind there being a, I don't mind this movie existing. Just write it better. Yeah. Have it make more sense. It's another dud. As predicted. As predicted. So I just love that Disney's like, oh, it's all these woke people we hired. Like, oh, my God. Like, now you're blaming them. You hired them. You made this decision, Disney. Is it streaming yet? No. Oh. Not yet. So that's the Marvel story. But here's the last thing that I saw that I wanted to share with y'all. You ever heard of a pilot that came out called Boldly Going Nowhere? No. Nope. So I found this on YouTube. I didn't even know this existed. Boldly Going Nowhere, I'm going to read this from wikiwand.com. Boldly Going Nowhere is a proposed American science fiction single camera comedy television series created by Rob McElhenney, Charlie Day, and Glenn Howerton. Oh, the guys from Always Sunny, yeah. The series was planned as a parody of the Star Trek franchise in the format of a workplace sitcom. The title was a reference to the famous phrase, to boldly go where no man has gone before, from the opening speech in the first two Star Trek series. A pilot was shot in 2008 but the project was shelved indefinitely. Well, I found the pilot on YouTube and I didn't know what this was because it just starts. It says, boldly going nowhere. I'm like, oh, what? and it's like, okay, we're going to do a Star Trek parody. And I'm laughing. I'm kind of getting into it. I'm laughing. And all of a sudden I see the people from Always Sunny coming in. I'm like, that's why it's funny. It's like these guys are behind. Oh, man. It. So it's a little rough around the edges. It's a pilot. Sure. But go look for it. It's on YouTube and it's pretty funny. I'm a big fan of theirs. I'm certainly going to go check it out. I never heard of it. So sounds like they wanted it to work. Didn't take off. 
but everybody from uh, all the main cast makes an appearance in the in the in the show. It's good, except for Danny DeVito, I'm sure. Yeah, he's not in it. <laughs> Rhea Perlman's in it though; she makes up for it. Really? No. Uh, <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting her to be in Barbie, and boom, there she was. The trio announced the upcoming project at San Diego Comic Con in 2008 while promoting season four of Sunny. Yeah. yeah, they had a dream, and it just. So I get a miss. Yeah. Didn't take off. Come season four, they were working with Danny at that time. So could have happened. So not only did I find that and really enjoy that, but the trailer for the Ted TV show on Paramount or Peacock. Oh, yeah. I heard this was coming out. Yeah. There's a red band trailer. I forget which one. Yeah. Yeah. I liked it. Looks pretty good. So it's it takes place years before the Ted movies. So it's really uh, Buck Wahlberg's character as a little kid. Wicked pisser. And it's like, this kid's just like super Boston. Everybody's just super Boston. <laughs> Hold on. That was your Boston accent? Wicked pisser. Okay. We'll go with that. Wicked pisser. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do accents, man. <laughs> I don't know. It looked pretty good. It looked pretty good. Okay. So it's been a good week for content. I just hope it's better than Ted 2. I didn't care for Ted 2 at all. Can you just email me the rest of this story? Oh, I liked it. Yeah. You didn't like yeah. it? Yeah. I like all those. T- I like anything that's dirty jokes. <laughs> uh, no, I, I definitely like Seth MacFarlane and anything he writes for the most part. I even like that 99 Ways to Die in the West. No. I even like that stupid shit. People hated it. That was stinky. Oh, that had a great joke in it. Neil Patrick Harris? <laughs> no, the I was thinking of Doc Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. All of a sudden, they bump into <laughs> Doc Brown in the West, and it's him in part three and they're crossing paths with him as he's trying to make a time machine. That was pretty good. Well, what do you say we bring sister Michelle and move on to the main segment? Let's talk about some Christmas stuff. Yeah. I'm sure she's chomping at the bit to get in here. Hey everybody. Would you please welcome Michelle to the show? Sister Michelle, who is playing with a weird reindeer toy. That's a screaming goat. (laughs) <laughs> it sounds like a goat it looks like a reindeer <laughs> this feels like one of the things that somebody would buy for my kids and it's like funny the first two times yeah. and then like the following 500s it's like get the yes, fucking hammer. i got one of them too it's a it's a santa claus and you hear i like to move it move it right and the whole thing starts going crazy <laughs> and he turns around and pulls his pants down and moons you it was the greatest thing i had to have it now it's like everybody walks by the office and presses it i like to move it i'm like i gotta throw that fucker out <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up every time i'm sorry i've heard it now like 10 times and it's it's never gonna get old I swear. well what a segue what a segue into the main segment here yeah, so we're going to talk about Christmas songs this week. We're out some of our faves, shit talk some others, but uh, let me ask you this, just to start this off, how early is too early to start listening to Christmas carols? Well, I have been in a retail business for a minute, <laughs> um, and I say as soon as Thanksgiving dinner is done. That's how it seems. Yeah. That's what they're pushing. For me. For me. Right. But they're pushing in the retail business that I'm in now, which I'm trying to get out of. They're pushing it like the beginning of October. Yeah, that's and crazy. that's just to me not good. No. Mm-mm. Well, we were talking last week because I I still hate Christmas and without saying where we work because Michelle and I actually worked for the same company and it was retail. Basically, it was in the photo business and we had to make like Christmas cards, like hundreds of millions of Christmas cards for people. We had that job and like that made me not like Christmas. It was so freaking stressful and so much work. That retail at the holidays, if it's a hot retail shop, like a toy store or a Christmas card place, holy hell, that is a bad time. Yeah. And I imagine a Christmas card place, like you had to start that stuff, like probably before Halloween to get it turned around and produced and mailed out in time for the holiday. Oh, yeah. I had one day where I did a 24 hour shift. Well, you had an easier one because uh, your place had the new machine. Yeah. The digital My one. place had the old machine. So I had to stay up late because a lot of people did not know how to spell. (laughs) (laughs) And when, um, yeah, that was one of the biggest things. Uh, They did not know how to spell. So I was one of the top card people 
Of course, I knew how to spell people's names on how they wrote it out or had to read handwriting. And yeah, <laughs> it was bad. I, I remember staying out till like 11 p.m. doing those cards at the place that I was at because you were at a different store. I was at. Oh, we still had that. Oh, it says Merry Christmas from. Is that John, Ron, Tom? <laughs> I don't know what the <laughs> hell this is. Oh, I remember that now. We had a day where we had to stay 24 hours. I remember being in the lab 24 hours. The cops came. They're like, are you breaking into the place and stealing shit? I said, no, I'll make it Christmas cards. Oh, my cards. God. I was in a mall. You were on the strip mall. I was at a strip mall. I thought you were going to say I was on the street. It's like, we don't talk no. about my hooking days. <laughs> I remember I, there was a local radio station. I don't remember if it was Philadelphia area or Lancaster area around here, but yeah, come three o'clock on Thanksgiving Day, they switch over to Christmas carols, Christmas songs, and they pump that shit out all the way up through the new year. Um, I can't remember. It was like 1045 or something like that. But yeah, I, that felt too early to me. Oh, yeah. The place I'm at now, though, I have to commend them. When Halloween, right before Halloween happened, they started and it was they already have like elevator music in the house in the place. And some of it's like, will you please shut up? <laughs> <laughs> but they would have it where it was like every fourth song had a slight Christmas type song to it. <laughs> and it built up and built. Now it's just strictly all Christmas. They were grooming you. They had a little bit of build up to it. So like for a music, you'd hear like a jingle bell here, maybe like a chime there. So like mm -hmm. you knew it was coming. It was mm -hmm. the prelude to the whole shit storm. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you, in doing some research, and not that I had to do research to pick out my favorite and least favorite Christmas carols, but I just got to thinking about the topic. It's a really weird thing. Like, in a world where things are getting more and more secular, that for at least six weeks of the year, like, you can just turn on the radio and just hear, like, like church hymns. Like, mm -hmm. go tell it on the mountain and... A little town of Bethlehem, and, and nobody seems to care. Everybody's just cool with it. I think it's a tone. And I know, Bill, I love you very much. We've been friends for a very long time. I don't like where this is going. No. <laughs> but. But I think some of the ones I picked out today, I think you're going to like. I think you're going to like. Because you, you had to pick out ones that you didn't think sucked, right? Well, they all suck. I was saying to Scott <laughs> earlier, I, I want to see if you remember. Do you remember the Dr. Dirty? Herniated yes. Christmas oh. disc that I used to play all the time. Oh my! <laughs> I remember the first time you you brought me to one of. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! I'm so sorry for having fun. I want to go back. No, oh, he's the. Man. I don't know if he's still alive. I don't know if he's still alive too, but oh, he was. He's like um Richard Cheese. He was like the Richard Cheese for Christmas carols. Uh, he was actually more than that, but he really had a good run when Christmas came around because that album yes. he, he was one of the people that would create a comedy record and it would get passed around because it was so dirty oh, yes. yeah yeah because nobody would sell it I loved it I loved it I, when you first showed it to me I was like what the doesn't play now it's very racist <laughs> it's very <laughs> bad <laughs> but it was a different time a different time as we say different time different it was time. a different time so there's basically two types of Christmas songs I realized there's remakes of Christmas standards from like ages ago and there's just brave souls that go ahead and try to do an original christmas song and let me tell you if you do an original christmas song you better have a fucking hit on your hands because there's more flops than not so let's get to uh let's get to the discussion here let's hear some of your faves some of your least faves um ladies first michelle what do you got for a favorite I have to go to a background on why i like christmas carols so much some of them right. i can't take some of them I have, um, when I was a little 15 year old, my mom gave me the, the job to make the baking cookies. So as mm -hmm. I'm baking cookies, you got to get in the spirit of it and have Christmas carols going on just music. Cause it's you're, you're in tandem. You're like every 10 minutes, you have to bake the cookies, cookies, cookies. So one of my favorites that I all time before home alone was ever around rocking around the Christmas tree by Brenda Lee. Okay. And I used Good to one. dance to it while I was rolling the dough. <laughs> <laughs> if that could be in a, a visual, I don't know. But I used to dance to it, have a great time with it. It's rock and roll in the 50s. Like, I would say rockabilly. Yeah. 
it's not your everyday carol. Because when we first came into this, I'm thinking Christmas carols. Are we going to go around knocking on doors, caroling carols? <laughs> no, we're not going. <laughs> we're not going like Victorian England going around like King Wenceslas and shit like that. No. I mean, unless it's your favorite. Sure, we no. can. But no, we're opening this up to Christmas songs rather than Christmas carols. Yeah, I can't hear that song without seeing Kevin McAllister dance with a Michael Jordan cardboard cutout. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of my favorites of all time because I used to dance and sing to it. I'll give you this. As much as I hate these Christmas songs, they are pretty upbeat most of the time. They are easy to dance to. Well, there are some downers. There are there's some, some downers. downers. And they made my least favorite list. But, uh, Bill, how about you? You got a fave you want to talk about? I know you hate them all. I do, but it, the, there is a Christmas album I like. It's a very special Christmas. Do you know that series? Oh, yes. uh, wait. I know a Philly special Christmas. No. <laughs> is that the uh, one the Eagles made? So with Jordan Mailata yeah. and Jason Kelsey. Turns yeah. out they're good singers. No, it's a very special Christmas. It was a whole bunch of these discs. Um, they're just rock songs. Like it would be the. Yeah. The Tom Petty one, I remember really like it. Well, it's Christmas, it's Christmas time, time again. again. And at the end, he, he says, I want Rickenbacker. Like, I like that. So <laughs> that whole album I was into. Every one of them cool rocking Christmas songs. Well, my favorite of all time is Little Drummer Boy by David Bowie and Bing Crosby. Oh. But only that version, because the actual song Little Drummer Boy, not a fan. That's a downer. You get David Bowie involved. I'm all about it. Have you seen the video? Uh, I've seen the remake with uh, Funny or Not with Will Farrell and uh, John, C John C. Riley. <laughs> I didn't even see that. What are they doing? They do a shot for shot remake of the, the Christmas video. I saw the original, but yeah, Funny or Die. Funny or Die, it is not Funny or Not. Uh, John C. Riley and Will Farrell did a shot for shot remake where Will Farrell played David Bowie and John C. Riley played Bing Crosby. Oh, at the end, they try to beat the shit out of each other. I hope they captured the awkwardness of watching David Bowie and Bing Crosby pretend they know each other. Like, it was just so weird. They did not look like they even <laughs> had any clue who the other was. It's been a while since I've been the new anything. <laughs> <laughs> pum, 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 pum. <laughs> Peace on her. Yes. It was so, so dramatic. Yeah. I like it. Okay. I like it. Okay. How about a least favorite, Michelle? What do you got there? Uh, as much as I love Bon Jovi, and I love <laughs> Bon Jovi. I like Jovi. where this is going. I like where this is going. <laughs> Backdoor Santa. What? <laughs> Backdoor Santa. Backdoor Santa. Yeah. I. Yeah. I never really got into that particular tune of Christmas, but I do love Bon Jovi. Don't get you, me wrong, but Backdoor Santa. Is that from Have the you... Backdoor Santa movie soundtrack? <laughs> that's a, it's a bad movie. Even back then, I was like, what the hell is this? It made no <laughs> sense on rock and roll. He just wanted to have the caption, Backdoor Santa. I support that. I don't know this song at all. <laughs> I think it's on my uh, very special Christmas, and I don't even think I realized it was called Backdoor Santa. <laughs> well, I'll jump ahead. One of my least favorite, Happy Christmas. Talk about a fucking downer. John Lennon? God damn, that guy took the joy out of everything. Which one is Happy that's just Christmas? The, yeah, that's the one. So this over. is Christmas. Oh, I thought uh -huh. it was called. I thought it was just This is Christmas. <laughs> no, Happy Christmas. And it's ironically named because nothing about that song is happy. No. Hope you I have really a bad was... time. Yeah. yeah. I, thought, I, I really thought it was called This is Christmas. <laughs> Like, let's take a drab English Christmas and mix in some hardcore Christian guilt and just make you feel like shit. Wow. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. No. How about you, Bill? What What's one on your shit list? Well, my least favorite, hands down, is the one we talked about a couple weeks ago, that Mariah Carey one. Oh, oh that bitch. Hate that yeah, one. Yeah, that was number two on mine. All I want for Christmas is you. Yeah. Stinker. Oh, no. But everybody loves it. Everybody loves that song except the people she stole it from. What was that band's name? <laughs> <laughs> I forget. It was like uh, Vince Vance. Yeah. Vince Vance and the Valtones. Yeah, something like that. Geechee guy or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was Vince Vance. <laughs> I personally think the more they play that, the more people don't like it. 
I hate the way they prop her up at like the Christmas tree lighting in New York and she tries to sing it. And it, I mean, it's great for comedy, but it's cringe watching. But yeah, fuck her. And you know, too, that everybody was like, in those days, we all have to have a Christmas hit. Everybody's got to have a Christmas hit or you got to have a song that they play at weddings. It almost seemed like every band in the 80s was trying to do both of those things. Mm -hmm. Sure. And the fact is she's rolling around in snow. Nobody does that in that type of gear. <laughs> I mean, you're full on in snowsuit. You're not in a lingerie. Uh, I don't remember being in lingerie. <laughs> what kind of video did you watch? It was like a velvet, <laughs> it was like a velvet mini skirt. But I love yes. how you have a problem with the video when you do the song. <laughs> visuals for me no she does it is it she's too grandiose with it i think she's trying All to right. be um angelic rolling around in snow uh, no yeah i'm sorry i don't i don't like that they laid on mm -hmm. thick it is a lot yes it was laid on thick that is the correct terminology of that one well to go back to uh the, the two least favorites named here so far we got the happy christmas and oh, well, actually all three of them uh backdoor santa <laughs> Happy Christmas. And all I want for Christmas is you. All originals. So not remakes of standards. These were all original Christmas. I mean, Vince Vance did the original of the, All I Want for Christmas to be determined by a, a court of law. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, the standards are the ones that are just kind of flying under the radar here. All right, let's bring it back into the positive side. Michelle, what do you got for another fave? Another favorite of mine um, is by Chuck Berry. Run, Run, Rudolph. Okay. Have you, do you remember? Almost made my list. Almost. Oh. Almost. Almost. It did not make the cut, but I was telling Bill, I was going on two pages of favorites here. I had to, I had to dial it back and Chuck Berry did not make the cut. That is a good one. I like that one. To be honest, I was going for the top five that Bill would like. Okay. Oh. On mine. Yeah. You trying to kiss up to me, huh? No. <laughs> Somebody wants a three P. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was trying to do was show Bill that he actually does have a Christmas oh, spirit. You're trying to make the Grinch's heart grow four times yes, its size. Exactly. I see what you're going for here. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. How's it working? Not well. You would have had to pick all <laughs> Valby songs and uh, Weird Al songs. <laughs> How about this one? How about Christmas wrapping by the waitresses? Hate that one. Hate it? Hate it. You hate it? Damn. Really? That's what I forgot. Da, 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 da. It's the cranberries. Yeah, that's, you hate cranberries. That's one of the, hate cranberries. I hate cranberries. And that's one of the uh, ones that, yeah, I could do without that song ever again. If she forgot right. marshmallows or on her hot chocolate, would you have liked the song better? Or is it because she had to get the cranberries that you hate that song? I think I hate everything about it. The the voice annoys me. Her voice annoys me. The da -da 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 -da. oh, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Well, this has made your least favorite. Yeah, I think that one might be on the least favorite list. All right, give us give us one of yours then. So one that I like is the. I guess it's a yeah, it's a Christmas song. It's the Madonna version of Santa Baby. I like that one. Okay, I enjoy that one. So a standard a standard remake. Yeah. There you go. All right. See, I don't hate all Christmas songs. No, that's a, it is a good one. That is a good one. She did a good job on that one, too. Look what you guys are doing to me. You guys are converting me. You're making my heart grow. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a look at the naughty list, Michelle. Give us one of your least faves. As much as I love Bob Rivers. Do you know Bob <laughs> Rivers? He's kind of like a... It's kind of like a comedy type version of all Christmas songs. He's Dr. Dirty without the, the bad words. He's like Dr. Dirty without dirty. the... <laughs> yes, he's not yeah, dirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my least favorites of his was I Am Santa Claus, made out of Black Sabbath. Yeah. It used oh, to yeah. annoy the crap out of me, hearing... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I hate it. Hate it. I agree. I'm there with you. That was like that 1990s made for like Top 40 fucking radio bullshit. Mm-hmm. Hate it. Was he like a DJ? Was he like a John DeBella making funny tapes? Was he one of them? Is that how he like got around? Morning Zoo. Yeah, like yeah. a Rick D's. He's got Disco Duck. 
Did this guy just <laughs> nuts? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like, I'm going to be a musician and a radio DJ. That's what I think he was. I think he started out as a, because that's how he learned how to do the recording. It's all like radio recording studios. They learned how to make these things. Probably. I remember he had an ACDC one. What was that one, Michelle? Yep. ACDC. Oh, uh, oh crap. Yeah. I can't, yeah, remember, I can't remember that either. one. Hell's, Be- Hell's Bells? But it was like a Christmas no. version. Oh, here I got one. Here's a song I like. It's actually from ACDC. It's on the Razor's Edge album. It- it's totally weird that there's a Christmas song at the end of this album. For some reason, there's a Christmas song, but it's, I want a mistress for Christmas. There you go. There's a Christmas song that I like. That was it. That was ACDC. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> what a dumb song. <laughs> well, I like the theme. <laughs> All right, I cheated on this one, but my shit list, anything by the Chipmunks. Mm. Oh, no. come on. Is it too cute? Because they were too, like... Uh... Oh, I just hate the voice. Uh, I mean, Christmas can be late all at once. I don't care if you want to hula hoop, Alvin. I, I don't care. I just was over the whole thing. I got you. It did, it did get annoying at the end. Like, it was repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. I remember every time that song came on and would end, I'd like sort of glom on to what was the dad's name? Because I was feeling his pain. He's yelling at David his kids. Seville. That's right, Seville. Seville, yeah. yeah. But like when he's yelling at Alvin, like Alvin. I'm I'm not happy with Alvin either. I'm like, why wouldn't that fucking chipmunk just fall in line and be a good chipmunk? I hate that song too. <laughs> and it's all because of Alvin. He wouldn't shut up. He wouldn't. He just wouldn't nope. shut up. <laughs> Bring it back to the nice list, Michelle. The nice list. Okay. Do you, this, I'm just going to bring this back to nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my top faves because this is going to be one of my shit list versus all time faves in the same song covered. So my favorite uplifting of it is the 12 days of Christmas by Bob and Tug McKenzie. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Two pounds of back bacon <laughs> and a beer. Take off, eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> I forgot about that and one. And a toque. And a toque. I love the toque. <laughs> Come on. Who does not love Bob and Doug McKenzie? Oh, I haven't heard that in so days long. Of Christmas. Wasn't that Rick Moranis and John Candy? No. Yes. Nope. No, not John Candy. Rick Moranis and what was his name? Oh, I can see the other guy. Dave Thomas. Dave Thomas. Yes. That's right. Not the Wendy's, Dave. <laughs> Bob and Duncan McKenzie. All I can hear of half the time is 12 Days of Christ- Christmas or goo 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 Right. <laughs> Strange Brew was a great movie if you haven't seen that. Oh, man. <laughs> it's my all-time favorite. Um, sorry, when they came out with this. And that's the other thing, too. If uh, Back, I mean, going nerd all on you because one of my favorite bands is Rush. So when they came out, it was The Great White North. And when they mm-hmm. came out with this album, The Great White North, and Getty Lee was on it. The, the, they did The Great White North. And Getty, I'm like, Getty Lee? Oh, my God. So this has always been my favorite all-time Christmas, 12 Days of Christmas. Yeah. So let's tie it back to how it made your shit list. Do you not like any other version of The 12 Days of Christmas? Not the normal. The okay. normal 12 Days of Christmas annoy the shit out of me okay because you have that five golden rings the only other one that i kind of like is the muppets everything else in a normal straight 12 straight 12 days of christmas i can't take i i'm like shut up already (laughs) yeah talk about talk about a repetitive song you know (laughs) see there's one that i can only hear the john valby version five mother Four <laughs> suckers, three friends, <laughs> there's two tons of <laughs> and a <laughs> bit of <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. All right, Bill, how about another fave? Dig deep. Dig deep. Oh my god. All right, I'm gonna try to play this for real. I was gonna say Weird Al. I've already done the Weird Al gag, although I do like the Weird Al. Uh oh uh, god, what was the one? The uh, Christmas Fallout, what was that? Christmas at Ground Zero? That was pretty fun. Mm-hmm. And then, I never heard that one. Yeah, I think he has two Christmas songs. I can't remember the other. Cheech and Chong has a Christmas song. I like skits. I like Christmas skits. <laughs> Cheech and Chong. 
Na, na, na. Oh no, the vato, please. The vato with the bony knees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I have to see this now. Yeah. He's coming oh, down God. the street with no shoes on his feet. <laughs> I need I need to see this. Oh my I'm gonna look this up after right oh, now. Good. I'm gonna look that up. It's pretty spot on. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what I got here from the, the nice list. I have some like really old classics, but I'll I'll give one here that I know Bill's gonna be a fan of. Lindsay Buckingham's Christmas Vacation. Hmm? No. <laughs> Wait a minute. Right off the Christmas Vacation soundtrack. The holiday roll. That's a Christmas song? No, no, no. Christmas Vacation was only used on Hip Hip Parade. It's Christmas Vacation. Oh, I didn't know that was uh, Lindsey Buckingham. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. Holiday Road was... Yeah, he wrote it. I don't think he sang it, though. I love Holiday Road. All right. Well, just in case that one doesn't count, how about Melakaliki Maka by uh, Bing Crosby? It's the thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas. I can't hear without seeing Cousin Eddie... uh, Standing there in his speedo with his wife beater tucked into it, waving off the end of the diving board. <laughs> God, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. I I really <laughs> love Chevy Chase, but it's been you know I've been talking about watching Community and binging that and watch it. We're getting to the season now. It's the third season where Chevy Chase was starting to be a real pain in the ass on the set, and you can start to tell like oh. the mood on, of the show this year is not there. Like it just feels weird. And to be Chevy Chase, who's like, hold on, I don't understand. I'm the big name. I shouldn't just be a regular cast member. I should be something exceptional, which is what I think he wanted. Just watching him in this community makes me miss how fucking great he was in those old things. And it's so (laughs) weird to see an old Chevy Chase. It's just not special anymore. He's just one of the cast. So I understand why his ego was causing him to be a dick on the show, but. It is weird to see Chevy Chase just being a regular character and not a star. Mm-hmm. I mean, would Bella Kaliki Maka be one of my favorite if not for this movie? Probably not. Yeah. Let's go back to the shit list. Maybe that shoes song. There's one about shoes oh, that makes Christmas everybody. Shoes? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Christmas I was, shoes. Oh, dang it. Was that yes, on your list? Christmas shoes. That's on my list. Dang it. That's one that everybody can agree. It's just sappy Hallmark Channel bullshit, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I instantly hear it. I go, oh, it's that song. I'm, I'm tuning out. I'm not going to listen to these lyrics. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let me piggyback on bullshit Hallmark Channel gimmicky bullshit here. Anything by the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. <gasps> hmm. Fuck those guys. Hmm. I saw them in concert. I wasted money. Not a fan. Not a fan at all. Don't take Christmas standards. In fact, Canon is not even a Christmas carol. Now you want to play like a Christmas carol and like your fucking hair metal band? It's all bullshit. You're not even a good hair metal band. (laughs) (laughs) I remember like all the old hair metal guitar players are there playing Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Like Al Petrelli from Alice Cooper's band, you know, somebody from Sabotage was. (laughs) Yeah, so it's it's where hair metal guitar players go to die. The Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Fact. There is that one song that has a really good riff in it. Only one. I'm not not Christmas in Sarajevo. Yes, that's the only yeah. one. But the, that's the only good one. Every other one is like, like you said, over the top. It is pretty funny when you're listening to like Mariah Carey or you listen to something and then you hear. <laughs> it's like, whoa, death metal Christmas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not a fan. In fact, I go, I go so far as to say Mannheim Steamroller, better than Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Oh, shit. You know what? I'm probably merging those two. I, I can't tell you the difference between them. A lot of horns, a lot of brass. Uh, it's more like a brass ensemble okay. than anything. So that's not the one with the electric guitar. No, that's definitely Trans Siberian Orchestra. Okay. But if we're talking like Christmas bands without music, that's what we're looking at. Those are like the two head to head. Okay. That was your your least favorite, though, right? Correct. Not a fan of Trans Siberian. Not at okay. all. Okay. How about you? One of my least favorite, and it's probably going to be shocking because I am so upbeat and happy, blah, blah, blah. One of the most whiniest, I just want to punch him in the face and say, shut up, is the Jackson 5's I Saw Mommy Kissing Santa Claus. Almost made my worst list. I cannot stand how whiny, as much as I do love Michael Jackson in his you know later time, when he was a kid and they did this. 
uh, but he did. He really did see mommy kissing Santa Claus. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> he just he's whining. And it yeah. oh I don't like whiny whiny bands. When they're whining about something, it's like, no, I'm sorry. You gotta uh shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just stop whining. I'm with you on that. I can't stand young Michael Jackson, but I don't know how this just hit me. Do you guys remember there was a Jackson Five cartoon? Yes. 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 I was wondering if that was a fever dream. Yeah, I think they did that one wrong. They should have gotten like Josie from Josie and the Pussycats in there, put like Jabberjaw in there. Like, <laughs> let's make it an all star band. <laughs> Come on. If we're going to do the 80s right. So, you want to get us back in the nice list? Oh, I don't know. I'm running out of nice ones. So, there was an album that I loved. Again, not a big Christmas guy, not a big holiday guy. So, when Mary Axmas, A X E dash M A S, and all guitar. Christmas album with Steve Vai. Uh, I remember the guy from Toto was on it. It was like all these people, Joe Satriani. I would listen to that year after year after year. I've lost it since. Now that I've remembered it, I got to go find it because I really liked it. All right. I'm going to go back to a classic here. Bing Crosby's White Christmas. Peace on Earth. Did they have a video for that? No, wait. That was David Bowie. <laughs> yeah. You did break into Little Drummer Boy there, Peace on Earth. <laughs> she did. No, Bing Crosby had I'm the White Christmas. I'm dreaming of a White Christmas. Christmas. Yes, yes, yes. Irving Berlin did a full movie with Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye. We're going to have the hap, hap, happiest Christmas since Bing Crosby tap danced with Danny fucking Kaye. Again, the visual is probably why I like this. We watch White Christmas every year. But uh, yeah, it's a classic. It's I mean, everybody wants a White Christmas, right? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not leaving my basement. <laughs> Okay, so is it my turn? Is it yeah, my give turn? us a fave. Okay, one of my favorites, and you're going to be taken aback by this. Again, it's about cookie baking for me. <laughs> a Marshmallow World by Dean Martin. Oh, that's fun. Yes. It's marshmallow World in the winter. But I liked, the, I liked how upbeat it was and the way Dean Martin sang it. I don't think anyone else could sing it like Dean Martin did because he sounded drunk. Yeah, he probably was. <laughs> he was. <laughs> I can guarantee you there's a reason for that. Um, also, you just taught me that this was Dean Martin. I had no idea Dean Martin sang Marshmallow yes. World. No. There are some old <laughs> Dean Martin movies that I've gone to see just to see him drunk. <laughs> it's great. He's great. <laughs> for my next shit one. <laughs> exactly. The Killers Don't Shoot Me, Santa. What? Again? What? I, I've never, heard, of never heard this. Don't it's shoot me, Santa. Whiny song. Well, it was the killers. I mean, yes, it it was trying to be all like punk in this. And uh, I don't know. It 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 was no, just no. <laughs> when he was begging Santa for his life, was he older in years, or was it when he was young? <laughs> yes, young, exactly. <laughs> You need, to, it's the most whiny, like it, you literally listen to the song and you, anxiety creeps up on you. You can, I, I, I mean, it doesn't even have to matter with the don't shoot me part of it. The, the way the song goes, you just, uh, uh-uh. they should never have done it. So hearing how you feel about whiny Christmas carols, this was an honorable mention. Didn't make my favorite, didn't make my least, but I mentioned it on here. I think this time last year. What do you think about the Kinks' Father Christmas? As much as it's a catchy, fun tune, it's also a really, yeah, that's kind of morbid. <laughs> it's morbid? It's, a, it's morbid. Do you know the reason about that song? No. I, I was just thinking, oh, wait, that is a song I like, and now you're going to tell me it's a terribly morbid song. I never listened to the lyrics, really. Well, his old man can't keep a job, and he, he's telling Santa Claus, like, we don't want your toys. Give us money. We can't fucking eat. Oh, right. It, yeah. I mean, these are some dark songs. I mean, the other one's about Santa's had enough. He's going to kill the killers. Like, what the hell is going on with these songs? They're getting dark. i got to listen to these words. I like it. Don't love it, but I like it. I mean, they're they're trying to beat up Father Christmas to give him their money. Father Christmas, <laughs> give me your money. Oh, uh, there's a copyright <laughs> strike. <laughs> it's so weird that they wrote a song about a murderous Santa. <laughs> Santa Slay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a new horror movie now. We got to write this. <laughs> All right. So changing up gears here. Still on the shit list. 
Little Saint Nick by the Beach Boys. Oh. Yeah, it's not so good. No. Not a fan. No. It was just more of the same. I feel like they just took Little Deuce Coop and reskinned it for Christmas, trying to cash in on having a an annual replay, an annual payday come every December. You know what that song needs? Peace on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> All right, we'll 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 go, what, like two more? Bill, you tapped out. You can't dig any deeper. You, you've you hit the bottom of that mine. There's nothing left in this mine but some coal. I think I have a Christmas Carol Bill should have on his favorite list. Let's hear it. It's going to be Dennis Leary's Merry Fucking Christmas. <laughs> I don't think I know it. You don't know it? No. Oh, come on. Let me, let me find. Let me. I only know about the asshole song, which okay. he wrote for me. It's Dennis very much the Leary. same vein. I, I'm going to give you the first four lines and here is my impersonation, even though I don't have a deep voice like Dennis Leary. Oh, St. Nick's got bourbon breath. It's so cold. You could catch your death. A cop sold me some crystal meth. Have to marry fucking Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a new favorite Christmas song. <laughs> it is the Dennis Leary. Happy cr- fucking Christmas. All right. I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to love it. This is right up my alley. I put that on there specifically for you, Bill. Didn't even know he had another song. I thought it was only the asshole song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take this back old school. Nat King Cole's The Christmas Song, a.k.a. Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, is this good or bad? That's good. 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 Feels like winter to me. Nat King Cole got the voice to sing Christmas carols. Yes, he does, because I have my next one. Because I gave bills. I, yes. I think I gave bills. He needs help. He needed he needs help. help. So I'm g- putting Mayan over to Bill, and I'm going to take my second favorite. Well, not my second favorite, but Nat King Cole, Caroling, Caroling. Okay. That was an original. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sing that one. I don't know that one. Caroling, caroling through the snow. Christmas bells Christmas are ringing. Christmas bells are ringing. <laughs> I can't do that. Caroling, caroling through the snow. My Christmas <laughs> And it be. At least get it right. Well, my last naughty list song here is Johnny Mathis' Sleigh Ride. I just don't care for this song. What is this one? Sleigh Ride. Just hear those sleigh bells oh, ringling, no. ding, ding, dingling. Yeah. By Johnny Mathis, though. Did you ever hear the Ronettes? I have. Here's where I landed on this song. Sleigh ride with words sucks. <laughs> sleigh ride as an orchestral piece. Good. Okay. <sighs> okay. I know there's a few out there with like the uh, Chicago Orchestra or something, or there, there's two different orchestras that have recordings of sleigh ride. You got to hear the Ronettes. I Ronettes. enjoy them immensely. Okay. I know the Ronettes, but this is specifically Johnny Mathis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for any, anything of the Charlie Brown Christmas by Vince Garaldi. Okay. That's how you say his name? Garaldi? Every single item of that entire album is priceless. And the only one I believe that has... Any lyrics is Hark the Herald Angels Sing by the kids. Incorrect. No? There's another one? Christmas time. Oh, is, yeah. Here. Okay, okay. Okay, you got me. You got me. Yes. But that entire album, I can listen to that all day, every day. Especially live, jazz. I don't know how old I've become, <laughs> but I do like jazz now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not supposed to admit that. It was a jazz trio. Um, I will say the Peanuts, like the Linus and Lucy theme, not a Christmas song, but it does get played a lot on Christmas stations because it reminds people of this movie. But standalone, it's not a Christmas song. Linus and Lucy was just the Peanuts theme. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, Not on my list, but I also did like Snoopy versus the Red Baron. Yeah, But that was a great Christmas bells. Yeah. My final one here, no particular order. Somewhere in my memory by John Williams. Most people know it from the Home Alone movie. It's the whole final, the family gets home. And just because John Williams uh, basically scored our entire childhood, I have to go with this here on my favorites list. So this is a score. This isn't a song. This is a score that you like. No, no, no. It's a song. 
that he wrote, but I can't sing because I don't have the range. That's interesting. I don't know him to write songs. I only knew him to write scores, but he wrote just pop songs. No, this was the lyric. This is from the Home Alone soundtrack, but there's words to it. Wouldn't it be amazing? Like he's an amazing songwriter. And then you hear this and his words are like, Christmas is neat. Yay, Christmas. Like all the same, he can't write for shit. He can't write words for shit. <laughs> he's not a lyricist at all. He can only write chords and <laughs> he can only write symphonies. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Christmas. Yay, Christmas. You're the best. <laughs> presents. <laughs> Christmas presents. So this is going to go against something I shared last week as I shit talked Adam Sandler's turkey song. Oh. I do enjoy the Hanukkah song. The Hanukkah song is awesome. I'm sorry. The one thing that I still love about Adam Sandler is every single person that he has ever brought into his movies is still in his movies. He is based. <laughs> Except for Rob Schneider. No, Rob Schneider. Oh, he's gone. Oh, really? <laughs> He's Trust no longer. Me, he's not in the circle. He's no longer doing no. it. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but other than that, yes, Kevin James, everybody else, I did is not still know there. That. Chris Rock, yeah, yeah. I don't know what he did to piss him off. He got a little bit fanatical. I don't know. I know he's gotten political. I guess that's what's pissing everybody off. So there you go. There's some. There's some Christmas songs. Let us know if you agree, disagree. Hate mail, fan mail. I'll take it all. I don't care. At least you're talking to me. I want you all to write in and just. Mention how good my Boston accent was. Wait, did you do a Boston accent? <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, no, <laughs> he tried to, <laughs> but you'd never know it. <laughs> hey, guys, let's do the news. Well, let's talk about this thing from The Verge. So Dave Filoni, you know who Dave Filoni is, Michelle? No, who is Dave Filoni? Now he's the new chief creative officer of Lucasfilm. So Dave Filoni has gotten a promotion. So he will now work with Carrie Beck and report directly to Kathleen Kennedy. These are people who have been in the Star Wars universe for a while. And Dave Filoni is best known for what, Scott? Oh, the Mandalorian, uh, Baby Yoda, namely. But he also did Ahsoka, the Rebels series, anything animated that was Star Wars, and all the live action stuff, too. So is Dave Filoni the savior that they're trying to bring in? Some people think so. He's been there all along. He came up with some good characters. He only started doing live action when he and Favreau did Mandalorian season one. Mm. But people really latched on. And then he did the Ahsoka series. I believe he did the Obi-Wan series. Oh, but, I like the Obi-Wan. Yeah, like there was a couple different directors there, but he's basically... One of the guys that's like in charge of keeping a consistent story across all media. Okay. Well, I figured you would like this, Scott, because this guy's really about, you know, telling new stories and he's not all that into the Skywalker universe that I like more than everything else, but you're ready to move on from that. So I thought this would be good news for you. I like it. I welcome it. It says here he will continue directing a new Star Wars film that connects to the characters and storylines from those streaming shows. Filoni has a long history with Star Wars, having worked on the animated Clone Wars and Rebel shows. Yeah, you didn't mention Rebels. That was a great show. His creative vision has been credited with keeping interest alive in Star Wars during a period when some fans were disappointed with the movies under Kathleen Kennedy. I am one of those fans. I hated what she did to the Skywalker series. <laughs> well, you're not alone. He's hit or miss for me. I mean, some of the parts of Ahsoka I could care less about, some I loved. Boba Fett. That was a big turd in the punch bowl. But, you know, there's other things that he does. It's great. Did you guys hear about the new Aliens TV show coming out? No. No. Nope. Yeah, how about that? Aliens. The series does not yet have an official release date, but was originally expected to premiere in 2023. However, filming has been delayed due to the industry strikes, so a 2024 release now seems more likely. The cast includes a bunch of people I never fucking heard of, uh, except this one guy, Timothy I almost said elephant, oliphant. Yeah, wasn't Oliphant? he in one of the uh, rebels? He was. Yes, he was in uh, Mandalorian. He played the sheriff. He was also in Justified. Played Sheriff Elephant. <laughs> no trailer has been released yet, but the series is set seventy years in the future on Earth, which is a first for the Alien franchise. It is being created by Noah Hawley, the mind behind Fargo and Legion with original Alien director Ridley Scott as an executive producer. 
Filming was set to resume in Thailand in early 2024. So this could be cool because I just watched that uh, Godzilla show. I watched the first episode of that. Yeah. So this is kind of like that. Like we're going to bring it to TV. I think this is a franchise that could work. Do you have Apple TV now? I got the free trial. Oh, okay. <laughs> Deciding how much I like this Godzilla show. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like Alien, it's, it, the more Ridley Scott's involved, the more I feel like it's just convoluted and I just don't care. Like it could be fun and it could be exciting to explore that world. But like with some of the like Prometheus and stuff like that, it just got too heady and not fun. And I just couldn't yeah. keep track of it. And I felt like oh, I don't I don't care enough to pay attention. Just have aliens jump out of people's stuff. Like, let's just do shit like that. I read this and I was like, I'm into it. I like it. I want to see it. But I am probably the only one. I'm pretty sure this whole thing is dead. I think this is just a franchise that somebody paid a lot of money for it and says, better keep cranking out content because I paid a lot of money to have this alien name. Yeah. But I can't imagine how many more stories there are with this mm -hmm. i feel the same way about predator i mean then they put them together and it was just like i don't care yeah yeah i'm burned out on predator too like that when that prey came out that new like take on predator was nice but like i'm not looking to go back to that predator well there isn't anything else to tell me as far as i can imagine so unless somebody comes up with an amazing idea for aliens or predator i'm probably not going to go see these things but if it's a tv show <laughs> I'll give it a shot because that sounds interesting. It has to keep me. It has to do a great job because even this Godzilla thing well, was a little shaky with it. There wasn't enough Godzilla. All right. I need certain things in my alien show. Don't be one of these shows that doesn't ever show an alien until like episode four. You know, like, I don't know what it's going to be. We'll see. All right. Let's do one more. And then I'm going to go eat candy canes. So this is from Collider. New The Office series won't be a reboot, according to the showrunner. I feel like we ended that story beautifully. The characters had closure. So I guess it's a new office in that world, and they're just going to try to do the same thing again. Does that sound interesting to you at all? If they went to a different office, like the same crew went to a different office, like in Ohio. <laughs> this can't be in Scranton. Yeah, there you go. It can't be in Scranton. They can't go back to that well. They have to... It almost has to be a reboot. They can maybe reference the, you know, assistant to the regional manager mm -hmm. in it. Like those characters can exist around the edges, but this thing has to focus on somebody completely different. I think it would be cool if they took it from Scranton. The same film crew went to a different location in the United States and did the same thing. It's in <laughs> you would like that? I'd be like, oh, my God, they're phoning this in. <laughs> but it could be like a completely different, like, I mean, that was Scranton. That was Scranton, Pennsylvania. All right. I see what you're saying. Was Scranton that much of the humor in that show? Like, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I guess it was. So if they. Yes. Very much the yeah, setting. So yeah. they could benefit from a different setting because they did really write jokes around the setting. I don't know. You know. Did they? Or did they see one from Ricky Gervais? How are they going to do a season two or a series two if Ricky Gervais doesn't do it first? Because of the British the office is what you're talking mm -hmm. about. Well, I don't know. I thought that was interesting and I thought I would share with everybody. And that is it. That's my last news story. Well, I hope you're going to go forth from this show with carols in your heart and go out to the car and switch the radio station to that one that's 24 <laughs> seven Christmas songs. And it'll just put you right yes, in the spirit. Bill. I got the radio channel set up from when it was Halloween and just playing like screeching horror music and everything. It's still there. I just got to turn it up. Now it'll be Christmas music. You'll either get in the spirit or you'll <laughs> jerk your car into a bridge embankment. Either way. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas to all. Well, Michelle, it was great having you again. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing. Hi, everybody. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Old St. Nick's got bourbon breath. It's so cold you could catch your death. A cop sold me some crystal meth. It's a merry fucking Christmas. Everything's so Christmassy. The streets are